Today, we'll be speaking with Amanda De Silva. She characterizes such a great journey where she grew up in an oil and gas intensive rural town. Fantastic journey through education, volunteering, marketing, but ended up having her breakout success in tech sales and eventually working at a fascinating tech company where she's again using that equipment intense experience from her hometown in tech sales. You're really going to enjoy this interview. Stay tuned. Welcome to Seller's Journey, the podcast where we speak to great sales reps and leaders and share their real stories from start to sales success. Hi, everyone. I'm Joseph Fung, and we're speaking with Amanda De Silva. Amanda is a senior account executive uh, in strategic accounts at Fix Software. Amanda, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And where are you calling in from today? I'm calling in from Sarnia, Ontario. Oh, fantastic. Now, Fix Software, uh, great company, making huge waves in Toronto. Not everybody in our audience may know them, so maybe you can help us out. What's the elevator pitch? Sure. Um, So Fix is a computerized maintenance management system. So Mm -hmm. in other words, um, often called a CMMS. And just like you said, we work with uh, equipment intensive businesses, helping their operations teams uh, really schedule, organize and track their equipment maintenance. uh, So they're able to make better data driven decisions. Fantastic. Uh, And uh, just for the, uh, the record here, how long have you been at Fix now? Ooh, I think I'm going on two years. I'll be up two years in July. Well, you're making waves. I mean, I think I saw you went from rookie of the year to uh, to MVP of the team, something like that. Is that right? You're right. Yes, it's been a wild ride, but it's a lot of fun. Wicked. Okay, stories, journeys. Let's let's kind of start at the beginning. Sarnia, Ontario. Uh, Can you share for our audience a little bit about Sarnia, just so they have an idea of where this story starts? Sure. Sarnia, Ontario is in southwestern Ontario. It is a small rural city. About 70,000 people reside here. Um, Our main industry is oil and gas, petrochemical, um, and types of all different types of chemical businesses, um, as well as we grow corn. That's awesome. So great context, helps people understand the the journey. Um, But for you personally, uh, where'd you go to school and what'd you study? Sure. So I went to Lambton College. Lambton College is in Sarnia. It is a technical college. It's a fantastic school. Um, Mm -hmm. I studied business administration uh, with an advanced diploma in marketing. So that's kind of where I studied uh, to begin. But I branched off. I took a certificate at Purdue for industrial distribution as well. And then later went to Athabasca University to get my bachelor in business management as well. Nice. Now, one of the things that jumps out to me and... It jumps out to me partially, I think, as a founder and entrepreneur is is you also founded your your own project, uh, you know, while there and and spent time working with communities in Zambia. This is so fascinating. Can you can you share a bit about the idea, the project, that journey? Sure. So, as I mentioned, uh, we grow a a lot of corn in Sarnia. And we mm-hmm. had the opportunity when I was in college to create a program uh, with social impact. So it didn't have to be in our hometown. It could have been anywhere in the world. Um, and with that, uh, the college would actually support you uh, with securing funding, resources, and sort of the logistics of how to get the, pro- the program off the ground. Um, So we decided that um, we would go to Zambia, Africa, as I had one of my peers um, who was from there. And the original idea was sort of to install a solar panel on the school. Uh, But when we got down there, I looked around and and we sort of had this idea, like, you know, their corn didn't grow the same way it did in our hometown. And we thought that that was something that we could definitely improve as food scarcity is um, obviously very real in rural Zambia. And so that's kind of how the project was born. Uh, We kind of came home, took this idea, uh, met with a couple of farmers. Um, Of course, with the support of the college, we went back to Zambia and we launched Project One Seed. That's remarkable. And and I understand you had the chance to, you started at school, but you had a chance to work on it full-time post-graduation as well, right? Exactly. So um, I was very fortunate at the end of sort of um, my last year as I was graduating and the college opened up a role uh, that was really focused on entrepreneurship. And so obviously there's a lot of parallels there. Um, we mm-hmm. were providing microfinancing 
um, small business loans in, in Zambia. And then we received funding at the college um, from Ontario Centers of Excellence to start um, an entrepreneurship program in our hometown. So again, building business plans, helping uh, businesses secure funding, helping them with their marketing efforts. Uh, and so they hired me uh, to sort of do both. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in both of those, while you're you're working on those, uh, you're, you finished your degree, you, you ended up exercising that, that marketing background and taking on some marketing roles is my understanding. Could you, could you share a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So again, graduating with, um, with a, a marketing background, um, that's sort of what I had uh, in mind when I was leaving school. And then as I got comfortable in the role, um, and like you said, you know, I had a, ma- a marketing manager role and, and a director role, I learned that uh, my own interests sort of lied at the bottom of the funnel. And I wanted to see, you know, if I would be uh, a good sales rep. And unfortunately, at the time, we didn't have a lot of selling being taught in, in the school. So um, you, you kind of graduated without knowing that sales was a good viable career option for yourself. And so it was through marketing that I discovered that path um, sort of on my own and, and with the poke from an individual um, that I met who, who worked in Kitchener. Um, and he was actually on the board for one of the, the companies that I was helping through Lambton College. I was mm. helping them secure um, some funding through Ontario Centers of Excellence. And, and I met this man and he said to me, you know, you should really try it, try sales And if you're interested, I'm happy to refer you. And I kind of put some thought into it and I took him up on his offer and and I ended up in Kitchener. So I'm going to come back to landing in Kitchener. You mentioned earlier, while you were in in school, they didn't teach you anything about sales, but you uncovered your interest was more at the bottom of the funnel. Can you help us understand, you know, what, what helped you realize that that's where your interest was? What was that spark? So, you know, you spend a lot of time in marketing, um, building qualified leads and getting MQLs. Uh, And Mm -hmm. then, you know, in a smaller business, uh, you get to see them kind of just sit there. (laughs) Um, And so I started to um, essentially convert my own MQLs um, by myself. And I kind of took... Oh, wow. Yeah. So when I was at Investor Tech, I kind of took the initiative. Um, I was running these trade shows um, and doing a lot of events. And I took the opportunity to really go into sort of these engineering firms that I was working with. And I started to um, build presentations and sell. I did lunch and learns where I would go in and I would pitch these products. And I just started to get so much momentum uh, that I kind of got the interest in like, you know, maybe I'd be a better salesperson than, than just focusing on marketing. Wow. So uh, I love how you get that that wonderful spark and that desire to to make sure the service level agreement is adhered to. That's a great motivator. Uh, I love that story. Thank you for sharing. Um, you you spoke a bit about how an individual helped you land in Kitchener for so many people. Um, you know that they're struggling to figure out what's the right way to start or to kick off that career. And you, you've had somebody offer to do an introduction, uh, and you said sure. What happened next? Where did you land? Okay, so I landed at Vidyard, and I was so mm-hmm. fortunate to land there. Um, it was a, I was really afraid at the time um, because I'd put so much work into my marketing career um, and, and, of course, working um, with, with a nonprofit. And I, I developed sort of my own reputation and, and political capital in my hometown and at the college. So it was a huge jump for me um, to basically start my career over in business development. And I took an entry level position at Vidyard. But I was so, so, so lucky because I got the best manager you could possibly get. Her name was Ellen and she was the most encouraging person. And so, you know, I felt like maybe at times I took a step back in my career, but she always let me know and encouraged me to understand that I did the right thing and that I was in the right place for myself. And so it was just motivating. And I knew, you know, with her help that I made the right decision. You spoke a little bit about how she was so nurturing and understanding. Um, this type of coaching is so, so helpful. And for those people who are, you know, aspiring to get into that management role, can you share some of the specifics? What are some of the things she did that helped you feel comfortable with, with that career change? Like you said, it, it felt like it could be a step backwards. You know, what, what are some of the things that she did to help you feel confident with that choice? I think Ellen has this like really innate ability to bring your professional and your personal life um, 
together. And she did so in a way that it was, it was still always focused on, on the job and focused on, on the professional side. Um, but she really got to know you on a personal level. And by doing so, she was able to really draw on your strengths and your skills and, and you're actually your weaknesses too. And, and she had such a way of, and I always say she had so much tact and I always wish I could have the same <laughs> level of tact as Ellen, but she would deliver information in such a way, um, even if it was negative, that you could take something out of it and find the motivation to do better. And I almost wanted to always just do right by Ellen because I felt like she was putting <laughs> so much effort into me and developing me. Um, so I think that's what's so important is, is just, understanding that your employee is is also a person and, and the biggest part of their life might be at work, but there's also this big component of, of what happens outside of the office. I love that. The, the whole person uh, coaching, um, you, you spoke about how she was keeping her eyes open for you. And earlier you mentioned to me you know, a story about how there was no immediate obvious advancement opportunity, but that the company found you a role in a different group. Can you Can you share that a bit? Sure. So we, so Vidyard was, is just like, was just at the time and still is a very fast growing company. And I kind of just got hired at the, at the tail end of this really large growth spurt. And so mm-hmm. there was a number of really talented um, business development reps that had started before myself. And I think what comes along with having a good manager is that it's, the team was very even keel. So we were all performing at like a maximum level. We were all wow. using our skills. And so when it came time for advancement, there were very few roles that were open, but there were a number of qualified individuals from, from our team. And so it came down to really at the time tenure, because that was really the only thing that kind of divided us. We were, like I said, we were just so even across the team. Uh, and because of that, um, I wasn't able to secure an AE role, but I was ready to, to advance and, and I was doing really well. And I was an enterprise BDR and this opportunity came available on the customer success team. Um, and mm-hmm. it was enterprise customer success. So I said to Ellen, I need to apply for this job. And, uh, and she said like, let's do it. Let's whatever it takes, we'll get you there. And, sh- and she helped me prepare for the interview. Uh, and I ended up getting the enterprise customer success role, which was a huge jump at the time. That's great. Yeah. It was a big jump there for me. And I was so lucky to get the opportunity. So I, I love the, the culture, the dynamic there, uh, hidden in there is a really, a really powerful kernel of truth where you can be working at a, an amazing company and, and totally, you know, hitting your number and kicking ass and just because everybody else is awesome too, there's not always an immediate opportunity. And I love how balanced you were in describing that. Uh, I think it was a very, very fair description and a great lesson for people stepping into a similar role. I um, see it happen more often. Uh, and I think that that's the one thing that people need to realize is um, you've got to sort of remove yourself from the situation and take a look at the peers around you. And I think you'll know mm-hmm. that, that you're all really on the same playing field. So I think it's a it's great insight, but I don't want to lose track of a couple of your next roles. So touching base, you mentioned how customer success was such a great step up. Uh, however, you didn't stay at Vidyard. Uh, you, you ended up moving to another company. Can you share a bit around, you know, what were the circumstances? What was leading to that? And what sparked you to, to take on the role at Fix? Yeah, so it was a really interesting decision. So a few things had happened. I was doing really well in the customer success role. Mm-hmm. And I was building great client relationships. And again, I kept getting these like hints about sales. And my clients would say, you know, you're a you're a salesperson dressed in customer success clothing or oh, I'm <laughs> job on my sales team. And I and I just and it really piqued my interest. And and, I, and at the end of the day, I knew like my heart was in wanting to be an account executive. Um, mm-hmm. One of my uh, my my friends, my peers, and um, really one, my one of my greatest mentors, uh, Katrina, um, she and I worked together at Vidyard. So she ah. had um, moved over to Fix, and um, and I was sort of you know I wouldn't say headhunted, but I got this opportunity um, to discuss a, a, a potential role at, at the company with uh, with the sales director at the time. And I really wasn't looking, to be honest, I was, I was open to it, but I wasn't, I was looking for the right opportunity and then learning about fix. Um, the, the ICP is, um, you know, maintenance teams, operations folks in, in asset or equipment intensive businesses like oil and gas. And that's where I grew up. And like, that's where my family has worked and all of my, um, my, my brothers work in the industry. So it just was seemed like a perfect fit at the time. I love that. I want to. 
I'll unbox that a little bit. Um, can you share a bit? How has your personal experience impacted your ability to relate to that ICP when you're selling? Uh, for context, all the time we hear people saying they want to break into sales. How can I do that? And they have experience in HR or other industries or other roles. And we talk a lot about the ICP and you've done this. You've lived and breathed it. What what have you seen firsthand to, to make that easier? So I guess um, when I was working for Investor Tech, we sold directly into the same industry that I'm selling into right now. Mm-hmm. So I'd already had several years of conversing with operations folks, with engineers in these businesses. And so I knew exactly um, the type of businesses that they worked in. And one, one key element was that I was working on a project um, as the marketing director, and it was to replace these really um, old assets inside called the loading arm inside of these old oil and gas refineries. And when I was in the facilities, I'd, I'd actually go on site and walk and do plant tours. And when I was in the plants, I learned that everything was sort of antiquated. All of their assets were aging. They were still using pen and paper. They had wow. virtually been unimpacted by software at all. Um, so when I got the opportunity, this big light bulb went off like, oh my goodness, I have never heard of or seen a piece of software being used in maintenance And I feel like this is one of the only industries that has yet to be impacted by technology. And so I saw it as a great opportunity. And that's kind of why I I took the leap. That's fantastic. So you think about this journey. uh, I know I promised we wouldn't take up too much of your time. So (laughs) you're one more and then some rapid fire. uh, Mm -hmm. And then we can let let you get back to to closing deals. Um, If you think about your journey, you came out of school, studying marketing, following your passions, uh, but now clearly nailing it inside these these sales roles. If you thought about yourself back in in college, what advice would you have given past Amanda? I think past Amanda always let fear dictate every choice that I ever made. And I always was so afraid to step outside my comfort zone. And even um, at a time when I was getting down um, the line with the interviews with Vidyard, I almost backed out and I was so afraid and I thought, I can't, oh, wow. I can't give my career up and, and start from scratch. And I, and I just, something inside me said to do it. And that meant, you know, taking a significant pay cut, moving away from my family for almost the very first time and, and sort of giving up my whole life. And that was the single greatest decision that I ever made. And I now, every time I, uh, feel a little bit uncomfortable with the decision that I'm about to make. I tell myself that's just fear, Amanda. And you know that fear just keeps you in the same place. Um, and wow. so I always, I always recognize those feelings now. And if I could have told myself um, to not let fear dictate my choices when I was younger, I, I'm sure I would have gone into sales a lot sooner. Uh, I love that phrase. Fear just keeps you in the same place. Uh, that's fantastic. Okay, a couple of rapid fire questions. Ooh. Game for them. Yes, of course. Okay. You've worked at a few companies, a few different roles. Intrigued to hear what you say. What's your favorite sales tool? Ah, Okay. So my favorite sales tool would have to be um, Gong or Chorus. I've used both of them. I love them both equally. Um, Just key for for, for improving on on your sales process. Nice. Uh, And outside of the workplace, what's your favorite movie? I'd say anything with Christian Bale. Out of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's easy. Yes. Um, when you were a kid, what did you want to grow up to be? I wanted to grow up to be an ER doctor. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yes. Uh, this is awesome. I like how we're uh, performing surgeries on, on companies now and yeah. helping them upgrade. Uh, yeah, that's excellent. Go. I've never thought of it like that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I, Amanda, this was Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your journey and your experience. I'm, I'm delighted that we had a chance to chat today. Me too. And thanks so much for having me. I had a blast. Uh, it's awesome. We'll, we'll chat again soon. And I hope you have an awesome day and uh, happy selling. Thanks so much.